Welcome to Bible 180 Song of Songs. This is not just a song, but the song of songs. Whether this song is written by Solomon about another, or by Solomon about himself, or by another about Solomon, we know for sure that this is a song about love. As a song, this book is very poetic and focuses on feelings and passions, not so much on narrative flow. It's not presented in chronological order, but rather upon a building crescendo of emotions, dating, interactions, and desire. There are several different speakers. We start with the beloved, a young maiden, who is a Cinderella type character. She's not been pampered, but rather has worked hard. She starts out unconfident about herself, but her lover, who is described as a shepherd, compliments her on her value, character, and beauty. She adores him and he her. They praise each other's limbs, eyes, breasts, among other things. They compliment each other, including such scandalous expressions as apple breath, tower-like necks, a waist like a mound of wheat, and spicy cheeks. Whew, it's getting hot in here. The woman describes the man as an a handsome apple tree that provides beauty, refuge, and security. The man describes the woman as a heart thief, among other things. Also, in the compliments and wooing, there are quite a few comparisons to creation, including geographical features of the region, as well as gardens and buildings. Sexy. The other characters are the friends, who are not jealous or bitter, but rejoice in this beautiful love and loyalty and try to foster and encourage it. The Song of Songs is often interpreted as an allegory about the love of Jesus for the church. However, it seems best to first appreciate that the song marvels and approves of the love between a man and a woman. It's very clearly exclusive and about committed love, so there are strong connections to Jesus and to faith. The man and the woman only have eyes for one another, and they even take measures to to discourage others from dating or wooing them. Still, it emphasizes hope deferred. There's great longing and anticipation. The lovers almost come together, and then they're split apart repeatedly. This only heightens and arouses them further. There is nothing wrong or unchristian about sexual desires, or the birds and the bees, or what's north of the knees. In fact, Song of Song celebrates and rejoices and soaks in the wonder of God's created world. While there are bounds and rules regarding our sexuality, this book is instead concerned mostly with the joys. We should seek to foster this sort of devotion and joy in our relationships, and certainly in the potentially penultimate relationship between spouses. God wants us to enjoy the world he created, and we are happy and content when we can find pleasure in the relationships that are God-ordained and pleasing. Song of Songs is, reflects in some way the devotion, faithfulness, and joy that can be found in the relationship with the, the triune God. While it's different in some significant ways, God's commitment, his care, and his courtship of his people mirrors that of the lover of Song of Songs.